Hello, welcome to the video on focus groups. The first thing we need to understand is what is a focus group? Well, it is a form of group interview where there are several participants and a moderator. The participants can be individuals based on a social context. It could be individuals who have been chosen because of their gender or because of their um, status in society. It could also be because of their educational background. There's a multitude of reasons of how you can actually choose the participants in a focus group. The focus group has a, a discussion of a specific issue and that issue is the main topic under discussion with the participants. You could also be studying the interaction between group members and seeing the varying and the, the um, objective outcomes of individuals in their discussion on topics. You might be wanting to see how um, ideas are expressed or uh, modified or uh, amended as a result of group discussions. So the use of the focus group could be to examine the way people construct and organise their knowledge, to understand why people hold certain views. And the basis behind this is the probing and challenging of the participants in the focus group. It's also to elicit a wide range of views from the participants. Additionally, you need to think, well, are we going to record what these people are saying and how are we even going to record it? Well, it is best to tape record or even video record the group um, in their discussions rather than taking notes. The moderator needs to moderate the discussion and if he or she is note taking, then that, uh, that uh, function will not be carried out. In the moderation, you need to study not only what people say, but who says what. And in that, you need to make sure that participants can all have an input into the, the discussion. Recording of how the topic was discussed enables you to actually understand the nuances of the language. And then actually, you can process the collected, collectively defining meanings of the language people have used in their discussions. However, it can be difficult to distinguish voices and it's very important that the focus group is happening in an environment that is quiet. So how many groups, how many focus groups? Well, you would need more than one, but not too many. And you can continue until theoretical saturation has been reached. You um, can use socio-demographic characteristics uh, to actually determine your groups and the larger number of groups needed to represent a diverse range of viewpoints could also determine the number of groups that you actually use. Again, on the basis that you reach theoretical saturation with those groups. Running more groups does increase the volume of data and also the complexity of an analysis results as a result of the number of groups that you actually have. So how many participants in each group? Well, six to 10 members are required per group. But in order to get six to 10 people and to account for no shows, you would need to invite about 20, 25 people. When may we use the smaller number of people, uh, like the six uh, member group? Well, when you're discussing sensitive issues, um, issues that might cause shame or um, those which are controversial, but obviously which have been approved by the Research Ethics Committee. Having the smaller group enables each person to have their say. And from that, you can glean personal detailed accounts from individuals. Using larger groups, more towards your 10 member size, where you want to have um, brief suggestions, but numerous brief suggestions from everybody. So the level of moderation involved, try to be unobtrusive and non-directive. It's always best to have a select number of questions that you can use at the start so as to encourage discussion and then allowing the free reign of uh, participants. Only intervene if the discussion wanders or if there is a long science, silence and that silence can actually be overcome by having a prompting question. 
Selecting participants. There's um, a variety of means of selecting participants. Maybe your research itself dictates the participants that you want, such as the socio-demographic factors. You, maybe people from an ethnic group or an ethnic origin or a gender. Um, it could be based on their shared experiences or characteristics. Or it could be what's known as a stranger versus natural groups. The natural groups are, um, are those who are already formed in a sense, like maybe mother and toddler group or a book club group, whereby strangers are where you pick people at random and nobody knows each other. You need to question which makes it easier to discuss the topic in hand. And natural groups are taken for granted assumptions, are used to, for taken granted assumptions. So in asking questions, do we ask a few general questions to provoke a response or a structured list of specific topics to be covered? I think you can actually form that conclusion once you actually start off uh, the focus group, but always have both available to hand. An open-ended approach encourages the discussion between participants and they don't feel confined by the moderator's questions and it does enable diversity of views to be heard, whereby a more structured approach is used when the researcher already knows a lot about the topic and when there is low participant interest and this is to prompt maybe other answers. The moderator should have a um, idea of how to begin and end the focus group. You should introduce uh, yourself, thank people for coming, um, explain what the project is, um, explain the format and the procedure involved in the whole focus group. If there are any ethical issues, to raise those at the beginning and explain how they are being dealt with. It's an opportunity to collect demographic information and at times I even have a small short questionnaire with closed questions that they can tick very quickly. Provide name cards uh, for everybody and ask them to display them. To close the focus group, thank the people for participating, explain what happens to the data and if needs be arrange any further meetings. The next image is an image of, um, in a sense, the agenda for a small business owner manager focus group. And this is by Blackburn and Stokes 2000. As you can see, the length of time of this particular focus group is over an hour long. It's actually an hour and a half. So it shows for the moderator the length of time on each section if needs be. Group interactions in focus group, um, there's various interactions that may happen. One could be where there's complementary interactions between the individuals, where there's a consensus um, between participants, where they actually act or complement and continue on other people's viewpoints. Conversely, the argumentative interactions is where the people challenge each other and then opinions are revised and modified and makes people account for their views. You could have one or the other type of group or interactions or even a combination of both. The focus group as a feminist method, um, this avoids decontextualization of individuals and it's less exploitative where participants are empowered by directing the discussion. Overall, there are actually limitations of focus groups, and this is where the researcher has less control over procedures because there's a moderator involved, but you're in enabling a free flow of conversation uh, by participants. There's a large volume of data and within that data, you then need to thematically in analyze that data, as well as looking for patterns of interaction, if any. Focus groups are difficult to organize. They can be exceptionally time consuming to transcribe um, the recordings of the focus group. There tends to be agreement as a result of face to face interaction, then disagreement in discussion there is always a potential for causing participant discomfort. However, 
If the moderator is a successful moderator, these limitations will be mitigated. I hope this video has helped you to understand focus groups and good luck if you are holding a focus group yourself. Bye bye.